Hey everyone, uh, Robert with Odd Random Thoughts and um, today we're doing something a little different. Uh, as you can see, um, I have my ugly mug there on the screen. I thought it would be kind of nice to get a little more personal so we could, or at least y'all could take a look at, at who's talking to you. I've got my uh, good old cup of joe here and ready to dive into another tutorial. Uh, as I talked about in one of my previous videos, I wanted to go over how to create uh, your, a mail server using Ubuntu Linux and so that's what we're going to do today. Um, now I would like to mention that uh, well actually I had started making a video uh, on this before and I actually went all the way through it and uh, after I was going through the editing process and listening to it I kinda realized that I did a little too much rambling and I'm starting to do it again already uh, but uh, it, it's it's only because uh, creating a mail server is not just the simplest of tasks because there's so many variations of configurations that you can use so what we're going to do first is get the mail server up and running and we're going to get it running with all available ports um, so we can have uh, all SMTP will have uh, the, the 25, 587, 995, 993, uh, uh, all the uh, IMAP ports, everything is going to be available to you. So at that point, <clears throat> that's probably where we'll leave off when we get to that point. And uh, you can choose what to open on your firewall as far as which protocols which ports you want to use on your mail server uh, say you want to use uh, TLS um, and but you don't want to use a standard 25 port uh, for submission say you want to use 587 then you can open the the appropriate ports to to do just that and if you don't want to be running an IMAP server and a POP3 server then you can kind of take your pick on on how you want to do that um, <clears throat> and uh, so let's let's go ahead and kinda get started here I, I have the terminal up here on the screen uh, and we're gonna be using postfix um, we're gonna be using that for uh, sending mail and we're gonna be using dovecot uh, for receiving mail now we're got, we're not going to set up a webmail client of any kind, um, but when you get through with this, you will be able to create an account in let's say Thunderbird or Outlook, and it should connect right up to your server as long as your firewall is configured properly and all that good stuff. Um, now keep in mind if you're going to make a I know I'm rambling, but I need to tell you all this if you're going to make a production mail server that you can actually use outside of your home network uh, outside of the local LAN then you're going to need to own your domain name um, so like in this this video here uh, we'll probably make a like robert.com uh, will be our email uh, domain so I would need to own that domain and in my registrar control panel I would need to set up MX records and pointer records for my public IP address to point to my server just like we did in the the web server videos um, and then also in your your local DNS settings in bind you would also need to configure uh, your MX records and your A records uh, pointers all that stuff as well as uh, you'd want to to configure a text file for SPF uh, record and that just helps secure your mail server uh, a little bit more um, so let's go ahead and get started first of all um, first thing let's take a look at our our host name so uh, let's just do a uh, host name dash F 
Okay, so right now we see it's testserver.goodtimes.com. <laughs> I did that special for y'all, by the way. Um, <clears throat> anyway, if we want to make a change to that, uh, let's say that this is going to be our server name that uh, we're going to use to configure our email client with. So if we're going to use robert.com or if I'm going to use robert.com for my uh, sending and receiving domain, then a good um, mail server would be mail.robert.com. So let's go into uh, let's go into that file. We'll do a sudo nano etc hosts and hit enter. Okay, so here uh, we would need to change our host name here. So let's uh, take this out and we'll put mail.robert.com and then here we would just put our host name which would be mail. Okay, so we'll go ahead and write this file and exit and then let's uh, also take a look in that same directory at hostname file and here it has test server so we'll change that as well to our host name which is mail write that file and exit <clears throat> okay um, now we can force these changes uh, to occur only during the session we're working with but I recommend going ahead and doing a reboot at this time so we'll we'll reboot the server and then uh, we'll come right back after it's uh, back up okay so our server has been rebooted it's back up <clears throat> now let's uh, just check we'll do a, a another uh, host name dash f okay so now our host name is set to mail.robert.com or whatever you chose um, uh, you can use that same one if you want to but uh, I'd be flattered but <laughs> pick whatever you'd like uh, to do that step so now that we've got that configured uh, let's go ahead and update our uh, repositories so we'll we'll do this if I can get my password right I don't think I did nope okay and this was actually of course as y'all know this is I do all of this in a virtual environment uh, and I don't think I have even updated uh, this server because I actually moved a clone over and I what I do is I keep a clone of a a Ubuntu 14.04 server that already has uh, all of the uh, hardening performed on it and everything so it's nice and secure and it has nothing on it uh, it's just has SSH configured and I have uh, public and private keys that I keep for for this and then when I get ready and I want a fresh server I just copy that clone in and add the uh, the hard disk to the virtual machine settings that are already there and I've just and I've got a fresh server so this one I haven't done any updates or anything on I don't think uh, I may have beforehand let's let's go ahead and do a, let's go ahead and do an upgrade dash Y and just see what all's in there I don't think it's yeah that's not bad I think the clone was recently updated so that's good let's see if there's a, a, a dist upgrade yeah, looks like there is. We're updating the kernel here. Hopefully this won't take too long. I'll take a drink of my coffee. And I'm hoping I don't have to <clears throat> auto remove any old unused packages. And I really should probably reboot after this, but I don't think I will since this is just a test machine but you may want to go ahead and reboot yours if you're following along and doing this same same thing here okay so that's done let's clear that out so let's go ahead and install postfix so we'll do a sudo 
apt-get install postfix and we'll do a dash y. Now this is going to pop up on us uh, during this install and ask a few questions. Uh, we're just going to hit enter to get through all these questions uh, on this initial install because we're going to do a, a reconfigure uh, package on it and we'll we'll put our answers in the appropriate ones at that time so let's just uh, go ahead and get this going and we'll just hit enter twice and it'll go ahead and finish up <clears throat> Okay, so now we'll go ahead and uh, do a proper, we'll do a sudo package reconfigure postfix. We'll go ahead and take that off. So we'll just type that command in. Okay, so we're going to want to pick internet site here. Uh, this means that we can send and receive mail uh, inside and outside of our network so we'll pick internet site okay this is going to be our uh, fully qualified domain name which mail uh, actually is one but we want to use the root domain of our mail server so we'll back this out and just put robert.com or, or you can put goodtimes.com or, or whatever you use there um, and go ahead and hit enter. Now here, this needs to be uh, a user with root access, okay, that's going to be used as a relay basically for uh, mail coming through the server, uh, which we don't really want to use root, but, but whenever you set up your, your server for the first time, you create a user that has root access and on my server, which really you can use the same one that you use to log into your server with so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use Robert uh, since that's the user I log in with. We'll hit OK. <clears throat> now here you want to be sure any domain name that is associated with this server is in this list. So mail.robert.com that's the actual host name uh, of the server so we'll leave that and then we'll also put robert.com because that's going to be uh, the one that's uh, used for sending and receiving mail uh, localhost you want to leave both of those entries very important that you have those um, and on my production mail server my actual server the server itself has a host name uh, as defined on the local network and that uh, host name for DNS is actually different than the machines host name for the mail server I don't know if that makes sense or not but uh, so if your machine has another domain uh, that can access that machine another domain name uh, running on the local network for instance, uh, if this was called um, mailserver.robert.com, uh, as far as my local DNS server is concerned, then within the server itself, Postfix configuration is using mail.robert.com. Well, you would also want to put mailserver.robert.com. Uh, uh, this machine here is not set up that way. Um, so we'll go ahead and but just be sure you at least have these um, your mail.domain.com and your domain uh, listed along with the local host so we'll hit OK uh, for synchronous updates um, we can say no to that um, here this is going to be now this is you're going to this is where you're going to run into problems as far as sending mail <clears throat> if you you can leave this just as your 1270.0 network uh, just as the the loopback um, when you start going to send mail 
now there's some other settings that can affect that as well but it's best to go ahead and define your local network in there as well um, because you're, you're going to have some issues when it comes to sending and receiving as far as this initial configuration that we're doing here goes so here we'll want to go ahead and put in um, my LAN network here on this subnet is 10.10.10.0 slash 24 and we'll just add a space between uh, the last entry and add our subnet now yours may be 192.168.0 slash 24 uh, or dot one or dot zero dot zero dot one dot zero whatever your subnet is you know uh, what it is so you can put that there and hit OK uh, we'll leave this to zero for no limit and plus is fine for the extension character internet protocols you can set it to all uh, I'm not using IPv6 on this network so I will leave it at IPv4 only and hit OK and it will go ahead and go through the rest of the configuration <clears throat> okay now uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna configure uh, postfix uh, for SMTP auth and that'll be using Dovecot SASL and so we need to edit the uh, postfix the main.cf so we'll do a uh, sudo nano and that's in etsy postfix main.cf okay so let's just uh, take a look at some of these settings here okay so relay restrictions that's good you want to permit your networks and permit any SASL authenticated users and uh, defer unauth now there's some settings that say you can use uh, relay restrictions for everything but um, I prefer to also have uh, the client restrictions and sending sender restrictions um, let me take a look here at yeah because um, your sender restrictions um, you can actually set a a file uh, that will verify usernames and you can do a hash check on the sender access um, and I like to set the hel hello restrictions as well as client and recipient restrictions uh, separately from uh, the relay restrictions so um, it just works out a little better that way there's there's some complications you can run into so but these are the three main ones that we want to have set here for our our relay restrictions okay and then we want to make sure our host name is correct which it is and then uh, we'll look for our come down here and we'll add some lines here we're going to set our home mailbox and that's going to be equal to mail dir slash which is going to put a mail dir uh, directory <clears throat> in the home users folders uh, which would actually allow you to to enter mail command if you have mail utils installed to receive your mail actually through the terminal uh, if you want to but this is the way that uh, that this this setup is going to access the mail uh, mailbox so we need to do a SMTPD SASL type is going to be equal to dovecot 
okay and then uh, SMTPD SASL path is going to be equal to private slash auth <clears throat> okay um, we'll do SMTPD SASL local domain and I believe I believe I'll leave that blank let me I'm looking here at uh, actually yeah actually your local domain you can define in uh, whatever your domain is here uh, so like we would put robert.com uh, or you can put whatever um, whatever you're using for your your mail domain <clears throat> and then we'll uh, SMTPD SASL security options it's going to be equal to no anonymous okay so no anonymous users uh, through SASL and then uh, we'll do broken SASL auth clients I believe this is for legacy type clients uh, we're going to allow that um, if it's just you and you know what your client is then you can set that to know if it's not a, a legacy type software I think that's I'm pretty sure that's what that's for um, so now we'll do a SMTPD and let's see we got our auth clients we'll do SASL auth and we want to enable that for our SASL authentication and here are SMTPD uh, recipient restrictions this is uh, um, we want to uh, permit our networks okay and then also <clears throat> this this helps secure your server a little bit as far as sending receiving and relay access and all that kind of stuff uh, especially uh, if you're you're sending and receiving outside your local network so we will also want to permit any SASL authenticated users and then we're gonna reject unauth destinations and that's uh, no s on the end it's just reject unauth destination I kinda went out of the line there uh, but you can see the setting there so okay now uh, we can also do client restrictions okay um, so allowing those that can access um, from an external client so SMTPD client restrictions and those are going to be very similar we're going to permit networks permit SASL authenticated and then we're going to reject unknown client host names uh, no s again sorry I we're rejecting the host names but the the command is only reject uh, unknown client host name no s okay host name and that's going to be it for our uh, client restrictions now here for the SMTP and SMTPD TLS security level uh, you can set it to may uh, which means can or cannot basically but uh, I set mine to encrypt uh, it's kind of up to you there's some settings in master.cf as well that you can alter for for this kind of thing um, but for the sake of this video 
uh, let's just go ahead and, and set it to May. So we'll do SMTP underscore TLS security level and we'll let, let it be equal to May and we'll I'm gonna do some follow-up videos on the mail server uh, in baby steps because there's a lot of things that you can go through especially when you start testing your mail server uh, through like MX toolbox and email security grader you're gonna you're gonna see some stuff and you're gonna be like oh man you know I got a lot of work to do on this and and it's true and before you you open it up to the world uh, as far as uh, having it accessible like like I have it uh, my mail server entered into my iPhone and I can send and receive mail through it just like I could Gmail or my ISP email or anything else from anywhere uh, I don't have to be connected to my my home network so uh, and that's the ultimate goal is is to get it to that level but <clears throat> but we got to take this in steps so first thing we want to get this all working properly first so and we can fine-tune it later and and one of the big things I can tell you is read the postfix documentation I know that nobody likes to read uh, or not nobody uh, excuse me for saying that but I know it's easy to sit down and watch a video and and think okay well it's all fixed well there you know you you need to do a little research too on your own because there's a lot of stuff you can learn in fact all this stuff uh, all the videos I've made everything I've I've spent hours of reading and research and studying and years and years of practice uh, with this kind of stuff so it's it's not something that that you can just do in a snap or in a pinch I mean it can take a little bit of study and especially if you want to get real serious about it so I urge you to read the postfix documentation It's kinda of grueling and there's a ton of it but uh, read it to get a little better understanding of of what these commands are and what they mean and and the configuration uh, you'll really be glad you did but <clears throat> anyway this is kind of a long uh, process so we're going to kind of breeze through some of this stuff but we'll go ahead and define our SMTPD TLS security level now so we'll do SMTPD TLS security level and that is also we'll go ahead and set it to May and then we'll do SMTP TLS note start TLS underscore offer and we're going to set that equal to yes and we're going to set our log level to 1 SMTPD TLS log level and that will be equal to 1 and then SMTPD TLS received header and we'll set that equal to yes <clears throat> as well okay so that's all we need to do in here uh, for now so we'll write this file and exit now comes the fun part we need to generate our certificates for TLS let me get a drink of my coffee before we start this okay <clears throat> so we'll do a open SSL we're going to generate RSA des 3 dash out server dot key and you can do 2048 encryption or uh, let's do 4096 uh, we'll hit enter okay so here we want to enter uh, a passphrase we're going to need that passphrase again here in a second so remember that so we'll enter it and we'll verify okay now let's uh, open SSL RSA dash n and we'll do uh, our server dot key 
out to the server dot key dot insecure and now we need to enter the passphrase we entered a minute ago okay so that wrote our RSA key now we're gonna move the server key or basically copy it into our server key secure file uh, we're basically creating a, a security certificate uh, that can be used without a passphrase so we'll do move server.key server.key.secure okay and then we'll we'll move our server.key.insecure and to the server.key okay and then open SSL request a new key server.key dash out server.csr okay now here you're gonna be asked all the goody goody questions uh, we'll say US just for giggles uh, Missouri City Kansas City organization name don't need that organizational unit common name this needs to be your fully qualified domain name which is robert.com for this server here you would put whatever your your FQDN is for your server this is very important that this matches uh, this common name needs to be the same as your fully qualified domain name not the mail dot domain dot com but just the domain dot com okay and then we'll hit enter you can you can fill out any of these sections that you want uh, it's up to you uh, challenge password we are not going to add one or a company name so that's good there okay now this is kind of a long one so we'll do open SSL uh, let me clear this and I'm gonna come down about to the middle here so y'all can see a little better uh, we'll do open SSL X509 dash request dash days and this will be for 365 days in our server.csr and we're gonna assign the key server.key out to server.cert and hit enter okay so that uh, got our private key and then we're just going to copy our server.cert into our etsy ssl search directory and our server.key into our etsy ssl private directory and we should be good to go so we'll do sudo copy server.cert and we'll put that in etsy ssl search directory <clears throat> and then we'll also copy our server.key in the etsy ssl private directory okay now we're going to use what's called <clears throat> the post conf command uh, to insert the paths to our keys uh, into our main.cf file so we'll do sudo post well, I'm a <laughs> sorry about that uh, sudo postconf dash e and just put an apostrophe there and we'll put smtpd underscore tls underscore key underscore file space equals space and we're just define our directory here where we just moved our files to so SSL whoop SSL private server dot key and don't forget the closing apostrophe okay and then we'll do the same thing for our server dot cert sudo post conf dash e apostrophe smtp D underscore TLS 
cert file that will be equal to our Etsy SSL certs and server dot cert and the closing apostrophe and hit enter <clears throat> okay so now we can go back into our our uh, main CF and we can see that uh, we can do sudo nano etsy postfix main.cf and you can see here under the TLS parameters it added those lines for us so that's that's uh, directing actually changed them because before it was uh, the weird snake uh, PIM oil or whatever certificates so it changed those uh, to the proper paths to our files so uh, we don't need to do anything in there I was just taking a look to show you um, so now we need to make some changes to the master.cf so let's do uh, instead of uh, nano etsy postfix we'll do master.cf okay so um, we're going to uncomment uh, some lines here we'll come down here to submission we want to uncomment that this is going to be uh, for our submission ports uh, we're going to uncomment uh, the name postfix submission uh, our security level this will be an encrypted uh, connection for submission uh, we're going to enable uh, the SSL auth and we're going to come down here and uh, uncomment our relay restrictions and our macro daemon as well um, and I, I believe um, I believe whatever is in the main CF will override these settings so uh, any relay restrictions um, or anything like that that we of course this is for submission but uh, a lot of those were for SMTPD and SMTP which uh, we have SMTP enabled um, but some of those will override the others depending on what the protocol is but uh, we also want to uncomment our SMTPS now remember in the beginning of the video I said that we're going to be setting this up to where all mail ports will be available to you um, and you can do a little research on these and see which which you want to use which you don't uh, TLS is of course the newest standard um, uh, so I, that's what I recommend using um, but if you want to use just SSL you can do that um, there's it, it's really up to you and of course only what you open on your firewall is what's what's going to actually work so um, but here under SMTPS we're going to uncomment uh, the, the top two there the wrapper mode and uh, postfix SMTPS and also uh, to enable the SASL authentication and we'll uncomment our relay restrictions and our daemon on this as well okay so that's all we need to do in here okay so we'll write this file and exit okay now um, we're going to install Dovecot SASL, um, which is different from the Dovecot Common, but we'll go ahead and install this first. We need it, so we'll do sudo apt-get install uh, Dovecot Common. We'll do a dash y. okay uh, this is going to ask uh, if we want to create a self-signed certificate we will say yes okay now here uh, the common name this is where we want to put in our domain uh, for the mail server or mail server uh, so we'll do mail.robert.com not our fully qualified domain name but our subdomain for our mail server uh, we'll put that in and hit OK and now we're going to need to edit a, f a few files uh, in Dovecot so let's uh, open the 10-master.com uh, first so we'll do etsy 
dovecot and that's in uh, conf.d directory 10-master.conf okay so in here we need to find uh, postfix smtp auth That's down here. There we go. Okay, so we want to uncomment uh, the Unix listener. Actually, all three of these lines we need to uncomment because we're going to change the mode to 0660 and we're going to add a user here that's going to be postfix and we're going to add a group as well uh, postfix okay so that's all we need to do in here so we'll go ahead and write this file and exit boy what a mess let me clear that out okay so uh, now we need to edit our 10-auth uh, it's going to be in that same directory our 10-auth and we're going to look for our auth mechanisms it's not too far down here okay there's our auth mechanisms we're going to change this from plain to plain login okay um, and that's all we need to do in this file so we'll go ahead and write it and exit now let's go ahead and restart both uh, postfix and dovecot so we'll do sudo service postfix restart and okay <laughs> I was gonna say hopefully we didn't have any errors but we do um, it's uh, the notes that TLS so let's see what our problem is we'll do sudo nano let's see postfix and that's in the main dot cf Uh, where's the note? I misspelled it. It's supposed to be start TLS offer. Yeah, you can't can't get away with misspellings around here. They'll get you for it. So, okay, we got that fixed. Let's go ahead and write the file and exit. And then let's go ahead and try to restart again. Okay, so postfix restarted and then we'll do the same to dovecot okay and dovecot restarted okay now we're gonna test it so we're gonna test our SMTP auth uh, and our SMTP pop3 port access first so we're gonna tell that directly to our mail server uh, so we'll do we'll do a telnet to our mail dot robert dot com and we'll just put in SMTP here and that should connect us up okay so we connected now let's send a hello command ehello to our mail server mail.robert.com okay so this is what we want to look for here is the start TLS so uh, it did, did uh, initiate start TLS uh, with plain login as authentication so everything is good there so we can type quit to get out of that so now let's try um, port 587 so we'll tell that in there and we'll do the same ehlo to mail.robert.com okay so everything checks out on port 587 for submission we'll type in quit okay okay now uh, I guess all we need to do is uh, install dovecot okay so we'll uh, do sudo apt-get install dovecot-imapd 
and dovecot dash pop three D. Okay. So these are going to be for our I didn't oh boy my spelling is pretty rough today okay so we're gonna install these these two packages okay so that's done so now we need to configure our mailbox for Dovecot so we'll do sudo nano etsy Dovecot and that's also in the conf.d directory and that's going to be 10 mail.conf and we'll hit enter and we're going to come down here to our mail location I just uh, page down once and uh, you can see here the different options uh, we have the mail directory at home slash mail dir uh, and we have a couple of other options but if you remember in the beginning we set it up to use the uh, mail dir directory within the user's home uh, so that's what we want to set it to so let's take all this out and we'll say the mail dir colon and the tilde slash mail dir okay so that's um, that's all we need to do in there so we'll write that file and exit and then we're gonna edit uh, for our pop3 so we'll do 20-pop3.conf and what, what did I do I did say 20 but I didn't type 20 20-pop3.conf okay that's what we need to edit and we're going to find um, our pop3 UIDL format there it is okay and we just need to uncomment this line okay so that should work so we'll write that file and exit okay so now um, we want to enable SSL so we can use SSL if we want to do that and that's going to be in the 10 sslconf and all we need to do is uncomment here uh, to enable SSL and TLS support so we'll uncomment that uh, write the file and exit and then we'll restart Dovecot okay so everything everything restarted no errors so now we're gonna we're gonna test our pop3 and our IMAP access for receiving mail uh, the first part we set up uh, our submission and sending mail processes so now we're we're gonna test out our receiving see if we can connect so we'll do a telnet to our mail and whatever your domain is dot com and we'll start off with port 110 okay so it connected to our mail server so everything good there so we'll type quit so let's also try our ports 995 okay we connected we'll hit quit okay and then we'll try 993 as well it's another pop 3 uh, 995 and 993 uh, one's SSL and one is TLS so and then we'll try 143 for IMAP as well so we connected to mail.robert.com on 993 so we'll quit so now let's try our 143 for IMAP it says OK login refers ID enabled start TLS OK 
everything looks good we connected it doesn't understand quit <laughs> okay so everything looks like it connected so if we want to take a look real quick at what uh, server ports we have running uh, there's a netstat command for that we can do a netstat dash nl4 and uh, this is just going to just going to show all of our servers that are running uh, here we have 1011 that's my ssh server that's one that we set up in a few videos back uh, there we have 25 uh, that's regular SMTP port and I will tell you that in setting up your mail server um, if you're running a Linux router or if you're running a DHCP router uh, you want to forward uh, port 25 has to be forwarded to your server in order to send and receive mail through your server either one if you if you do not have port 25 forwarded to your server you're gonna have problems that is a must 25 no matter what other ports you're using for submission or for downloading your email from the server doesn't matter but you have to have 25 open um, now as far as receiving your mail from the server okay uh, sorry about that y'all I had to take a break for just a second uh, kind of cut things off right there in the middle of what I was saying but <clears throat> anyway we were talking about uh, the ports that you can use um, for your mail server um, port 25 is is just a, a normal it's the default SMTP non-encrypted port uh, you don't necessarily have to send or use that port for sending and receiving it's actually mainly for like external servers from the internet they need that port open in order to send and receive mail to your server so very important that that uh, that that stays open um, <clears throat> now as far as uh, pop 3 access goes um, port 110 uh, that's the non-encrypted port um, for POP3 access. If you want to connect securely with, uh, if you want to use Start TLS or SSL TLS, then you want to use port 995. So and that would be the port uh, that you would need to open on your firewall. Um, 110 or 995, either one. I wouldn't recommend opening all the ports unless you just have a ton of clients uh, using your email server and you want them to be able to to have the choice of how they choose to connect to it um, otherwise I would restrict it to certain ports and just tell your users these are the ports this is how you need to set it up this is the ports you can use um, so as far as um, IMAP uh, IMAP 143 would be the uh, non-encrypted unsecured port uh, whereas 995 uh, would be the the secure IMAP port um, so if you're using IMAP which uh, is basically giving you the option you leave the mail on the server and then you can access the folders and whatever you have stored on the server through IMAP uh, personally I prefer pop 3 because I don't want uh, all my mail stacked up on the server uh, of course you can set it to delete from the server when you delete it from your client uh, and stuff like that but it's just up to you however you want to do it um, and then of course we have uh, port 465 uh, that's uh, for sending mail uh, through SMTP securely uh, you can also use submission port 587 which uh, is what I use um, but you can you can set that up however you want um, like I said where we're at right now in the video you have the option the world is your oyster you can set it up however you want as you can see here we have all the ports uh, 
and all the servers uh, for each port is running so you can you can take your pick on on what you what you want to use and uh, there's no harm in those those running this is where your firewall is going to come in you want to set up your firewall uh, to however whatever access you want to allow so let's say you're using uh, port 995 for secure pop 3 and port 587 for submission then you would want to come in here and in your firewall you want to open up port 25 open up port 995 and open up port 587 the others you don't have to open those so you know they're not vulnerable uh, as long as there's a service running which requires the authentication to get into that service you should be good unless there's some kind of vulnerability in the, in the software itself and Postfix has been tried and tested for a long time and it is very very secure as long as you set it up properly and I mean these people really know what they're doing and, and it's used all around the globe by very big clients so this is not just a little homegrown software this is this is the real deal so uh, I wouldn't worry too much about vulnerabilities as long as you let sh keep your uh, server updated with security updates and all that kind of stuff uh, one thing I'll tell you here uh, we can go into uh, our ver log directory and we can see here uh, we have a mail log and we can uh, we can take a look at that there's all our errors we were having when we were testing stuff but it will show up in here uh, and in fact let me give you an example here I'll show you one in action. Let me increase the font here so you can see better. Ooh, it's almost too big, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna bring this back down because it's it's the font being that big, you can't see everything that you need to. I'll increase it just a tad, but okay. So here is my actual production mail server log, and this is this is a, a production server. I use it uh, daily. Uh, as you can see here, uh, all these regular POP3 logins, Robert, blah, 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 that's uh, regular from client access. Um, but right here, uh, where you see postfix SMTPD connect from unknown, lost connection after LO from unknown, and disconnected and all that happened in a matter of a couple of seconds uh, actually yeah just one second so they were unable to connect uh, and then the anvil service is one that keeps track of connection rates and stuff uh, to your server but you can see that was an attempt to connect now that's uh, probably a relay attempt you know somebody trying to uh, uh, trying to relay mail through my server or see if they can connect see if they can use it as a relay but we defined all that um, before like if we go back here and look at our main.cf you know we put in our 
or client restrictions to permit SASL authenticated only. So that's, you know, that's protecting us from from anybody trying to to get into our server. Um, there's also other things too that that can uh, protect your server. Uh, let's see. Let me look here at a couple things that I have set up. Um, the did we do recipient? Yeah, we did recipient and client restrictions. Um, trying to see here what else uh, we might could put that. Uh, yeah, now another thing that uh, that we could do here. Let me make sure that that it's not in there. Okay, so we could uh, come down here and we could even put in SMTPD underscore hello required, which means they're going to have to answer to our server when they try to connect. They can't just blindly connect. Okay, and then we can uh, go a step further by doing SMTPD hello restrictions and uh, here uh, we can permit uh, my networks we can permit SASL authenticated we can reject non fully qualified domain names fully qualified domain name host name and then we can reject underscore invalid underscore host name so this is going to do a check on these host names it'll make sure that you know IPs resolve to host names host names resolve to, to IPs uh, that uh, that it's coming from actual fully qualified domain name uh, any legitimate email server is going to pass these tests so if you got some scammer out there trying to relay through a relay and trying to trying to it'll also help with spam and stuff like that so you know these are checks that will that will make sure everything stays kosher um, now depending on your environment depending on how you're using this um, you know you may not want to use all these settings that's why I say read the postfix documentation it's a lifesaver so uh, there's uh, just a ton of things you can do like I've I set uh, error sleep times soft error limits hard error limits uh, SMTPD delay reject uh, disabled uh, you can disable the verify command uh, another thing is uh, process limits uh, client connection count limits uh, connection rate limits um, you can set uh, header size limits or message size limits um, I mean it, it just goes on and on with the type of stuff that you can do now I will tell you this too that uh, if you're on a if you're doing this from home your ISP whoever your internet service provider is um, if you try to send mail to someone within that same domain or on that same ISP it may not make it to its destination and the reason is is because your IP is not set up as a uh, your IP is not considered a legitimate mail server as far as someone who's qualified to be serving mail uh, so a lot of times the ISP it may have uh, local IPs that it offers to clients set as basically as spam that way it gets rejected um, when it tries to come through because uh, the only way that you can fix that is to talk to your ISP and have them set your DNS record for if you have a static IP 
uh, this won't work if it's uh, dynamic but they would have to set the DNS record to to where that IP resolves back to your actual mail server domain name now it's easy enough to set it up uh, through your registrar and all that to where the IP will resolve to the host name but uh, or the host name to resolve to your your external IP but to get it to to work in reverse that would have to be done through your ISP so uh, which is probably not a very easy thing to do one way that I have gotten around that as far as sending mail to someone within my own ISP is to use a mail relay uh, which you can, if you have a hosting company or something like that that you use, uh, you can set up a relay host, and you can read up on this uh, in the internet. You can set the relay host, and you can uh, map uh, a password file, and set the port and all that to where it'll actually connect and send mail through that other mail server, which is is a legitimate mail server uh, that's considered, you know authentic as far as sending mail um, or you could actually set it up to uh, send from your own ISP possibly but uh, anyway there's there's some things to consider but right now I, I just enjoy using it uh, I don't really the only people that I send mail to much that are on my uh, the same ISP or family and I have a hundred email addresses <laughs> a bunch of different ones not a hundred but so you know I and and the one that I have running here is not my main mail address uh, I use it for stuff for the server and, and it sends local mail a lot I, I use it mainly for local mail here uh, for my my home but uh, anyway you know that's not the point of, of this video I'll try to cut this off now but uh, anyway, that will get you started. That'll get you set up uh, with all ports working, and then from that, which really is is one of the hardest tasks, is just to get it installed and working properly. And then once you do that, you can fine tune it, uh, read the post fix documentation, figure out you know what you want to do. A little searching on the internet uh, goes a long way. So anyway, I hope this has been uh, a helpful video for y'all and give me a thumbs up uh, if it helped in any way uh, if you have any questions or comments uh, leave them below I will do my best to help you out and uh, until next time uh, don't forget to subscribe too if you haven't done that already uh, I work a lot so I I don't get videos up as often as I would like to but I'm I'm trying to to get more up lately so there's more great things to come and like I said if I think of anything else or if I get enough comments on something that that uh, deserves a follow-up video I'll do that for you guys anyway uh, y'all have a good one and enjoy the mail server hope it all works out great for you until next time